Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, April 24th, around noontime, Mountain Time, 2022. The snowfall totals are in as of 7 a.m. this morning, and that's the blizzard of late April 2022, up to three feet of snow in the Wyoming Montana state line, and that is the big story. Heavy snow shuts down parts of all three Wyoming interstates. Keep calm. It's boom time. It was a snowy picture yesterday. Heavy snow from late season storm blanketed much of Wyoming on Saturday, shutting down several highways. Interstate 25 closed between Casper and Wheatland. As of 8.30 a.m., there was no estimated time for reopening. And it was whiteout, so why anyone was traveling is anyone's guess. Traveling was actually difficult to impossible, with snow totals up to two feet in parts of the plains yesterday. And more snow is on the horizon. And Saturday's snowstorm, in fact, wreaked havoc on eastern Montana. Take a look at that. Billings, only 10 days after the last big snowstorm, the state of Montana once again is getting pummeled. See what he has to say. Once again, getting pummeled. Not so much here in Billings, where Saturday saw mostly rain, but farther out east, it was blizzard conditions. Here's what the scene looked like at Dana Williams' property on Highway 59 south of Broadus. Some of the drifts are probably two and a half to three feet high, and other places the the ground is kind of bare just from the blowing, I guess. But, you know, it, it was really wet underneath. I think we had over an inch of rain last night before it turned to snow. So it's going to be wet. Transportation officials in both Montana and Wyoming closed several roads on Saturday due to snow. Notably, Interstate 90 is closed from Hardin, Montana to Ranchester, Wyoming. And I-90 is also closed in Wyoming from Sheridan east to Sundance. More road closures in Montana. Highway 212 between Crow Agency and the state line is closed along with all of Highway 59 from Miles City south to the state line. The Billings National Weather Service office took to Facebook Live this morning at 10 a.m. for an update on conditions. 300 feet makes all the difference in the world today in your elevation. Down low, you may even get some sunlight trying to melt the snow on the roads, but over those shorter passes, Government Hill, Lame Deer Divide, not a good scene. Baker's the core of this thing. They're going to be under blizzard conditions again for still another 24 hours almost, and brought us similar conditions. There's no timeline yet on when the roads will be opened again, as the severe weather is expected to stick around into the evening. The good news is the moisture that the storm will bring with it. Williams has a ranch south of Broadus and said she's hoping the storm leaves more moisture than the last one 10 days back. We just haven't had any moisture for probably a good year and a half, you know. Um, we've had two years of drought and two years of grasshoppers, and... And so if we can get this turned around, that'd be great. For the latest on road conditions across the state, be sure to stay tuned to our... Well, it sounds like it's uh, finishing up midday. Sunday will be the end of the storm in this region, but that is going to continue to move east. And you can see some power outages here still in North Dakota, 13,000. And let's talk about more snow. Buffalo ends the winter season as the snowiest city in America. There we go. The top five snowiest cities this year, and it's Buffalo, 96 inches, Anchorage, Alaska, 89.3, Rochester, New York, 86 inches, Boulder, Colorado, 80.4, and then Syracuse, New York, 76 inches. So quite a good snow year. Now, Idaho ski resorts open for one day after getting more snow in April than the previous two months, and that's a bogus basin boom. Looks like they only got three inches, though. I don't know how good the skiing is. But it was another day of record-breaking spring snow in Calgary. And strong winds and dry air propel the tunnel fire in northern Arizona. And while some regions are getting pummeled with snow, some regions are very dry. The tunnel fire, which has now been burning across northern Arizona's Coconino County for nearly a week, has now charred more than 21,000 acres, according to the U.S. Forest Service. Currently, the department reports only 3% of the tunnel fire is considered contained. And there is no precipitation on the horizon. Now, the good news is that most of Arizona is out of extreme and exceptional drought, and the fire is in fact just in an abnormally dry area, but there is zero precipitation in the forecast 
in Arizona here all the way out through the first week of May, nothing. Then we can hope for the monsoons coming early, but it, there's no precipitation until May 8th, 9th, and 10th there in Arizona. So the firefighters have a lot to do. Now let's talk about the snowfall totals here. A huge swath of North Dakota covered in a foot or more of snow, showing 18 inches in a large area up to three feet, falling in some areas of Colorado in the high elevations, and 18 inches up on the uh, Sierras there. Much needed snow. So that's good news for the precipitation. Now let's take a look at this GFS model here. So there's your Sunday. The area in question here, Ontario, is going to get buried through Monday morning. So huge amount of snow up in Ontario. And the blizzard is going to continue. So there's going to be more snow moving through North Dakota, South Dakota, and a little bit of Minnesota. There's Wednesday and then Thursday. So the Northeast could be picking up a little bit of snow late week here, a little bit of snow in uh, northern Idaho, and the Cascades picking up some much-needed moisture. So all good news. Colorado even picking up a little bit of snow. Now let's check out the seismic update. We had a very scary 5.3 up in McNeil, Canada, a surface quake. So this is not... Uh, indicative of potential rupture, just normal activity up here in the Cascadia Fault area. And a, a pretty moderate uptick here in the western ring of fire. And a very unique quake happening up in Maine. It's insane. 2.5 in Maine. Now let's take a look over here at Iceland where we've been monitoring an uptick in seismicity over the last several months. And it's continuing at low levels. You can see that little flurry we reported on yesterday. Well, seismicity is still elevated and tremor is pretty prolific. There are, can you imagine living in a country where this many earthquakes happen in two days? It's got to be nerve wracking. Seismic update. Ooh, Worldwide Volcano News, Sangay and Krakatoa is still puffing to 20,000 feet continuous. 20,000 foot extended southwest and more eruptions. So, this is on ongoing eruptions, continuous volcanic ash from eight to 20,000 feet coming from Krakatoa, still blowing. Thank you for bearing with me. I did have surgery on my jaw two days ago and it is recovering. Now, beautiful picture coming out yesterday morning from China or Japan. I forget the exact location, but the planetary alignment we're talking about was photographed a reflection here in a lake. There's Jupiter, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and the moon. An absolutely amazing shot once in a lifetime. Now let's talk about the Micronova explosion and the fact that people are talking about a paper coming out that proves that a Micronova is going to happen on Earth. Well, that's just 100% categorically untrue. And the fact that they use Micronova in this article and they explain it in 3.5 billion Great Pyramids of Giza shows you that it's a little bit of more science fiction than actual science. Now, here's the actual paper. Micronova is nowhere in the title. Localized thermonuclear bursts from accreting magnetic white dwarfs. Now, our sun isn't a white dwarf. In fact, it's a yellow dwarf. So not even the same type of star. And what they're saying here at the bottom when they actually use Micronovae, not Nova, they only use Micronovae, <laughs> and... They exclude accretion or stellar magnetic reconnection. So it doesn't even include our type of sun. Now let's just go over a little bit about the discrepancy here. White dwarfs are the ones making the micronova, and that makes sense because they're about the size of the Earth. You can see the size of our sun there. So this paper has nothing to do with yellow dwarfs or exploding stars. It has to do with accreting tiny little dots that are accreting material from other white dwarfs. So just not applicable to our sun whatsoever. Something else that's not applicable to anything whatsoever is CNN Plus. And with less than 100,000 subscribers, they've canceled themselves. That's a boom to knowledge. Seems like a lot of people are waking up and critically thinking these days. And we appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't shared this with like-minded people. Be safe. We love you. That is a boom to knowledge. 
Squatterman coming up. Links are below. See you there.